Happy Thursday, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to a special edition Planetarium live stream where we're going to recap the very exciting Perseverance Mars rover landing that happened today. So uh, thank you all for joining us on this abnormal day. Normally we stream on Monday nights. Uh, and if you're a first time watcher, let us know in the comments because we always love hearing people tune in for the first time. Uh, maybe Mondays don't work and Thursdays work better. So uh, let us know. And this is a live stream. So if you have any questions or comments, uh, post them in the comments. So let us know, first of all, if you're a first time watcher. If you're a returning watcher, let us know too. I'd love to hear where you're watching from as well. Uh, and also let us know if you were able to catch the landing this afternoon. So the official touchdown happened right around 3 p.m. And we're going to recap a lot of the interesting details about that. We're going to keep this live stream slightly short. Uh, at least I'm planning on it. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to do a, a special recap live stream. By the way, my name is Patrick Hess. I'm the Planetarium Specialist at Union Station. Uh, and uh, today at Union Station, we had a special one-day-only Mars tour, which was very cool. Uh, and thanks to everyone who came to uh, check that out. Let us know if you were uh, there today. Uh, don't worry if you did miss out on that. We did a Mars live stream uh, a while ago back in August, August 10th of last year. And if you've missed any of our past live streams, then you can head over to our YouTube channel. Just search for Arvin Gottlieb Planetarium and you can find all of our past live streams recorded and presented there so you can catch up on any of those you missed in the past. And be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel because that helps us out a lot. Uh, one last thing, I wanted to thank our presenting sponsor, MRI Global. Thank you so much for sponsoring and supporting these live streams so we can continue bringing all of our cool spacey science stuff to our viewers at home. Uh, and of course, we are open to the public at the Planetarium if you would like uh, to support us in that way as well. So keep that in mind, everyone. And I'm just vamping for a bit as we have people joining us. Already having some people in the comment section. Teresa says, I love Mars. Well, you're in luck, Teresa, because today was a good day for Mars. Thanks for watching. Wendy says, watching from Niagara Falls. Excellent. Thanks for tuning in. I hope things are uh, not too chilly up there. It's definitely been cold down here. Uh, Katie says, I watched it live today. It was so exciting. That's so awesome. Katie, glad you caught that one. And Teresa is uh, sending a series of amazing space emojis. So thanks for that, Teresa. Awesome. Robin says, first time watcher from Independence. Awesome. Well, welcome, Robin. Hope you enjoy the stream. And don't forget, you can watch all of our past streams on our YouTube channel. And normally we stream on Monday nights at 6 p.m. Pam says, just happened to see the live stream notice and so excited about the perseverance. I live in Waldo. First time. Awesome. Well, thanks for tuning, uh, joining us, Pam. Julie says, first time from Topeka, Kansas. Jeff, first time watcher from Miriam and Teresa from Shawnee. All of you, thank you so much for tuning in. Robert says, hello from Minnesota. So awesome. Keep the comments coming, everyone. Uh, but we are just going to kind of dive in and uh, recap the excitement. So uh, the Perseverance rover did successfully land and we're going to bop on over to the Mars 2020 website on NASA's page. A lot of cool stuff here. You can rewatch all of the landing stuff and we may do a couple recaps here uh, in a bit if anybody did miss the excitement. Uh, but um, yeah, so you can see here all of the mission control people uh, celebrating. They uh, only were, uh, mission, control, mission, yeah, mission control was half full uh, due to the pandemic. Uh, so a lot of the mission control scientists had to tune in remotely, but it was still exciting seeing them in person. Uh, and uh, the uh, rover landed successfully and it had a crazy landing, uh, which we will recap as well. But I just wanted to check down here. Uh, let's see, this is what I wanted to pull up. So this is a map showing us where it landed. It landed in Jezero Crater, which is a very exciting crater on the opposite side of Mars uh, from the Curiosity landing site, which is Gale Crater. Uh, but this landing site was picked for a similar reason as Curiosity. Uh, Curiosity being Perseverance's younger sister who landed in 2012. Our older sister, I guess, and technically since it's older. But anyway, um, both of these sites are similar in that they are likely the site of an uh, ancient lake bed. As we know, thanks to discoveries made by Curiosity, Mars was covered in oceans of liquid water in its distant past. Uh, and so they picked this landing site specifically because it is likely the site of an ancient lake bed. We can actually see uh, this f feature right here, uh, likely being some uh, uh, water erosion from potentially a river. And you can see here uh, water coming out uh, similar to a river delta here on Earth. And they picked that uh, very specifically uh, because river deltas are great places on Earth uh, for microbial life. And if there is going to be life on Mars or there was life at some point in the past, then it likely will be very simple, microbial. And so this is potentially the best location. And this was a very uh, difficult location to land on. 
Uh, and, and for that reason, uh, Perseverance actually had some special um, special parts on it that will that helped it, uh, not will, it did help it to land safely. Now, uh, let's go over to the spacecraft and talk a little bit about uh, that spacecraft. It has a really cool uh, 3D view of it. If I can find it here, there we go. Uh, so yeah, let's talk a little bit about uh, this spacecraft. Now, Perseverance uh, is uh, the sequel to Curiosity, so it is similar in a lot of ways, uh, but there are some important differences. Um, for example, I'm gonna bring up a picture of one of the major improvements. Do -do 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 -do. There we go. Uh, so uh, one major improvement, uh, the wheels here have been improved quite a bit. Uh, these wheels are aluminum, just like Curiosity's wheels, but they're quite a bit thicker. And if we look at Curiosity's wheels, they have been damaged quite a bit since it's been roving around Mars. And so they wanted to make sure that the sequel to Curiosity had uh, some uh, thicker wheels so that they wouldn't be so damaged. Now luckily Curiosity's wheels were designed so that uh, if they were damaged, it could still rove around, but that is one uh, definite flaw in Curiosity's design that they discovered. Um, it has uh, similar features. It has a robotic arm on the front here. Um, but one cool thing is that its sample uh, uh, capture system is much more advanced than Curiosity. And uh, Perseverance's system is actually designed to collect samples and leave them in caches on the ground. And then NASA's planning a mission in uh, about seven or eight years to actually send another probe to Mars to grab these samples and actually take them back to Earth. So that is gonna be really awesome when that happens. They are currently developing that mission. Uh, and so Perseverance, uh, similar to Curiosity, has a nuclear power source uh, that allows it to operate at nighttime. And it also helps keep the components warm since it does get very chilly on Mars. Although, that's, although it's a bit funny, I mentioned on my Monday live stream that uh, any of you who have been in the Midwest uh, uh, recently know that we've had quite a cold spell. And uh, the daytime temperatures on Mars actually exceeded uh, the, temperature, the low temperatures here in Kansas City for a couple days. So uh, Kansas City was actually colder than Mars for a while. So that's pretty crazy. All right, a bunch of people chiming in in the comments. Don't forget, if you're joining us, please let us know in the comments. If you have any questions, throw them in and we'll answer them. Uh, Ashley says, still excited to see what the cams tell uh, and show us. Uh, watching from Warrensburg. Thanks, Ashley. Arturo says, I missed the rover landing. Don't worry, we'll recap the excitement. Um, Sarah, uh, watching from Tampa, Florida, and they didn't see it. Don't worry, Sarah, we will recap. Sandra watching uh, with my youngin. Well, hello, Sandra and Sandra's youngin. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Karen, watching from Independence, woot woot. Uh, Kaylin says, we missed it live. Can't wait to see the highlights. Uh, and we've got M watching from Olathe. Rachel says, awesome. Chris, one of our longtime watchers, watching from downtown Kansas City. Thanks for tuning in, Chris. Great, so great to see you. Robert uh, says, uh, would the rover last longer than the other one? Ooh, that's a great question, Rob Robert. Uh, and I don't believe the main missions uh, for uh, these are that dissimilar. Um, Let's uh, look it up. So this is a fun thing we get to learn together. So the primary mission uh, for Curiosity was about two years. Now, obviously, Curiosity's mission has lasted quite a bit longer. Um, and let's see what the Perseverance's primary mission uh, is. Uh, and by primary mission, this is just the uh, the minimum that NASA is kind of planning uh, for uh, its scientific objectives. And uh, many times, if things go well, the missions get to continue um, for much longer. Uh, and let's see, I'm not actually finding uh, the Perseverance mission length, but I'm guessing it's pretty similar. But uh, because of some adva uh, advancements and um, you know, uh, corrections of problems with Curiosity, then hopefully it'll last even longer. One thing though about Perseverance is that it will actually drive three times as fast as Curiosity, which could be a little more dangerous. So that potentially uh, could cause some issues. And also the uh, Jezero crater that Perseverance landed in is a bit more treacherous than Curiosity's spot. So all those things to factor in, but that's a great question, uh, Robert. Thanks for asking. Amanda uh, and Hannah from Missouri, age seven, loves learning about space. Well, Hannah, so glad you love space and thanks for tuning in. Hopefully you'll learn a thing or two. Uh, and hopefully you have a good question for me because sometimes when I get asked a great question, then uh, I get to learn something too. And that's the most fun. Emily watching, so cool to watch it happen today. So great, Emily. Thanks so much for joining us and glad that you could join us earlier watching it as well. Teresa says, colder here than Mars, laugh out loud. Uh, men are from Mars, winner from Venus, I can neither confirm nor deny that, Teresa. 
<laughs> Mary says, hey, from Iowa. Lori from Ramona, Kansas. Dee watching from the plaza. Rose, Will is four years old and watching from Independence. Well, hey, Will, thanks so much for watching. Catherine, cool to, exper uh, to experience... Uh, cool experience to be watching and Jennifer this is our first time watching from Overland Park my son Grady loved seeing the landing today well that's so awesome Jennifer and Grady thanks for tuning in and don't forget we do live stream every Monday so we'd love to have you join us for another one all right so many awesome comments and questions uh, but we are going to put a marker keep the comments and questions coming folks um, but I want to recap the uh, do, 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 the uh, landing itself so we're gonna pull up the oop the uh, if I can get rid of it over here, the landing stream. So you can rewatch the entire stream here um, of the landing. But we're gonna fast forward to the excitement uh, coming in here, and I'm gonna try to watch with you all. Let's see. Normally we don't have the sound from my computer, so hopefully this will work. I'm sure everybody will shout at me if it doesn't. But let's go ahead and uh, things are pretty quiet and tense towards the. Uh, end of the atmospheric entry um, or so they're they're counting down to atmospheric entry here uh, and they'll be talking about things happening uh, to the uh, rover but let's actually let me just verbally recap so we don't have to watch the whole thing now so basically uh, today as uh, perseverance was approaching the atmosphere um, it started out uh, it well, actually let's um let's pull up uh, and, uh, da, 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 da. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, I want to see the video of the landing. Da, da, da. So NASA put together a really cool short little landing sizzle reel that for some reason I'm having a difficult time finding right now. Um, okay, here we go. That's what I'm looking for. Ooh, okay. Uh, Nope, that's uh, that's not what I want. <laughs> We're vamping here. If you have any questions or comments, now would be a great time to ask them. Uh, I should have bookmarked this, of course. Um, so, let's see. Uh -huh. All right, I think this will work. Nope, that's not it. All right, great, this will work for us. Okay, so let's pull up this video to start out with. So um, let me kind of get you up to speed uh, and we'll keep the sound off for this one. Um, so today Perseverance approached uh, Mars and it actually started inside this capsule. And as it approached Mars, it hit uh, the atmosphere at very high velocities. And although Mars has a very thin atmosphere, only about 1% as thick as the Earth's, uh, it did experience a lot of heating from the pressure of the atmosphere pushing against it. So it needed that heat shield as it entered the atmosphere. Uh, and so this is the atmospheric entry portion. Uh, and let's just actually watch this all the way through and then we'll experience mission control. So once it got through the main part of the atmosphere, it extended its parachute, um, which uh, happens right here. And this parachute is one of the largest ever created, 75 feet wide, largest for a planetary mission. Um, and this slowed uh, Perseverance's descent by quite a bit. Uh, but not f enough, so Perseverance had to drop out of its little pod there, and it actually used rocket engines to slow itself down, and then hover above the ground about 20 meters, and then use a sky crane to lower Perseverance down, and then fly off uh, to get far away from Perseverance. So this was the mission, and it did work. It was a complete success, uh, and Perseverance is now on the surface of Mars. Now this, uh, that time is called the seven minutes of terror. Once it enters the atmosphere, uh, they lose communication with uh, Perseverance and, um, and it's totally automated. So we just wait to hear what happens and if it actually made it. So let's uh, tune in to mission control as we uh, approach atmospheric entry. So we're just gonna pop in here just one minute to atmospheric entry. Um, so it might be a little quiet because they're a little quiet. Um, but I should have sound on here. All right. Maybe uh, we can get a thumbs up if there's sound. They're talking about its telemetry, where it is, how fast it's going. 
And at this point, Perseverance is uh, talking to us a little bit. It's giving off something called a heartbeat tone, which is just a little pulse that tells us that it's still there. It's still there, but we have no control over it. It's just going all by itself. This is a computer simulation, obviously. We don't have a video of Perseverance as it enters the atmosphere. They'll be narrating what's happening as it gets in here. Confirmation of entry interface. Perseverance is currently going 5.3 kilometers per second at an altitude of about 120 kilometers from Oops. the surface of Mars. So that is about three miles per second. That speed. Until it begins feeling the atmosphere of Mars pull it down. Once there is enough atmosphere, it will start controlling its path to the landing target. So the cool thing about Perseverance, different than Curiosity, is it has cameras uh, that it can actually um, guide itself to the landing target. So Curiosity was very automated, but Perseverance is actually smart in that it will take pictures of the landing site and actually determine the best spot to land all automatically. See a little bit of that slowdown of the atmosphere on the Perseverance entry capsule. Our current velocity is about 5.36 kilometers per second and an altitude of about 67 kilometers from the surface. We are probably seeing a more old plasma blackout at this point. So the plasma blackout, that's when they're going to lose communication for just a minute and this it's expected. that Perseverance is now performing bank reversals in the atmosphere. These are the steps in order to control its distance to the landing target. Uh, Perseverance has just passed through the point of maximum deceleration and has indicated that it felt approximately 10 Earth Gs of deceleration. There you go. That maximum point is called max Q, when the highest dynamic pressure is experienced from the atmosphere pushing against uh, perseverance at the maximum speed. Uh, We've talked about that before for rocket launches. VHF telemetry from Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter during that peak phase likely caused by the plasma blackout. Perseverance is still continuing to perform bank reversals in the atmosphere to control its distance to the landing target. So these bank reversals are basically it's it's guiding itself and slowing itself down like almost like an aircraft. This is all automatic. This is all computerized. Perseverance is going about one kilometer per second at slowed down quite a bit. Of about sixteen kilometers from the surface of Mars. We have entered heading alignment, which means Perseverance is no longer trying to control the distance to Mars, but in to the target on Mars, but instead is flying straight to the target. There you go. It's on target. velocity is about 550 meters per second at an altitude of about 15 kilometers from the surface. Amaro's reporting good telemetry log. We are coming upon the straighten up. We are starting the straighten up and fly right maneuver where the spacecraft will jettison the entry balance masses in preparation for parachute deploy and to roll over to give the radar a better look at the ground. The navigation has confirmed that the parachute has deployed and we are seeing significant deceleration. There you go, parachute's our out. Our current velocity is 440 meters per second at an altitude of about 12 kilometers from the surface of Mars. 
Now keep in mind that Perseverance has already landed on Mars because Mars is so far away that the signals take over 10 minutes to reach us because they travel at the speed of light. So we're all just finding out if Mars had gotten there already, which is another crazy thing about space travel. Perseverance has now slowed to subsonic speeds and the heat shield has been separated. This allows both the radar and the cameras to get their first look at the surface. Current velocity is 145 meters per second and an altitude of about 10 kilom nine and a half kilometers above the surface. Yeah, it's getting ready to deploy the sky crane. You can see they're already excited. Now has radar lock on the ground. Current velocity is about 100 meters per second, 6.6 kilometers of the surface. Right. So it's picked its landing spot. It's used its cameras to find the spot that it wants to land all automatically. Continuing to descend on the parachute. We are coming up on the initialization of terrain relative navigation and subsequently the climbing of the landing engines. Our current velocity is about 90 meters per second at an altitude of 4.2 kilometers. We have confirmation that the lander vision system has produced a valid solution oh, there you go. in part of terrain relative navigation. I spoke a little early. Now it's picked the valid, the valid spot. Just use its we computer algorithms to determine the, the best spot to land. Current velocity is 83 meters per second at about 2.6 kilometers from the surface Mars. We have confirmation that the back shell has separated. We are currently performing the divert maneuver. Current velocity is about 75 meters per second at an altitude of about a kilometer off the surface of Mars. It's coming down. Safety Bravo. We have completed our terrain relative navigation. Current speed is about 30 meters per second, altitude of about 300 meters off the surface. Of Mars. We have started our constant velocity accordion, which means we are conducting the sky crane, about to conduct the sky crane maneuver. It's coming. We've lost direct to Earth tones. As expected. As expected. So we lost the signal the during this part. Started. Oh. About 20 meters off the surface. Here it goes. Oh. <laughs> We're getting signals from MRO. We're waiting for confirmation. UHF is good. There it is. Oh. Touch on confirmed. There you go. They got away for it for them to. <laughs> they did it! Whoa! <laughs> everybody, everybody, clap emojis in the comments. They did it. They did it. Woo! So there you go. Very tense, quiet session. But again, at this point, or Perseverance is just doing all this stuff on its own. Uh, and um, they were just waiting and listening to see how it went, uh, which is pretty crazy to hear. Um, but uh, very quickly soon after this, they did receive the first images from Perseverance, which I've got right here for you. So this is the first photograph taken from this brand new rover, uh, the fifth Mars rover that NASA has sent. Uh, and here it is. It's a bit blurry in black and white, but that's uh, because they have actually glass covers on all the cameras, so they didn't don't get covered in dust. But they want to take a quick picture right when it gets there, obviously, to to prove that they were there and just make sure that everything looks good. Um, and there was even a scientist uh, during in the mission control during the stream when they got this photo who said, "Oh, I recognize that rock." They had planned this out so uh, minutely to the tiniest detail that. They recognized the terrain when uh, exactly where it landed because they weren't sure where it was going to land. They were aiming for Jezero Crater, but uh, Perseverance was going to kind of pick its own landing site uh, using its cameras, and it did, and it looks like a pretty good spot. And we're already getting some sweet, sweet science back from that brand new Mars rover. Um, so let's jump in to the comments, and uh, we're already about 25 minutes in, so we're probably going to wrap it up pretty quickly because I just wanted to recap this exciting day 
uh, and we, our main streams are Mondays. But if you have any other comments or questions, throw them in now because we're going to be starting to wrap this up pretty soon. Uh, but Ryan uh, commented earlier saying that uh, Ryan and Tyler are watching from Olathe. So thanks for watching, fellas. Amber says the Andersons are watching from Blue Springs, Missouri. We are very excited about history being made today. Indeed, Amber. Indeed. It's so, it's so exciting when these things happen. And um, uh, it's also uh, awesome to, just to see pe more people learning about it and talking about it. Because uh, it used to be that these types of things weren't sort of big news. Uh, Rose uh, is commenting and says that Will wants to know if dinosaurs lived on Mars. Uh, and uh, Rose wants to know uh, what kids should learn to work at JPL, the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, where Perseverance was designed someday. Well, those are great questions. First of all, Will, thanks so much for watching and asking that awesome question. Uh, and man, wouldn't it be awesome if dinosaurs lived on Mars? Um, and we don't know if there was life on Mars. Now, I will say if there was life on Mars, there's a good chance that it was pretty simple, probably very tiny microscopic life, little single cells, uh, tiny uh, little uh, organisms like that. Uh, but who knows? Maybe Perseverance will dig up a fossil or two, but we're not really sure. What's more likely, though, is Perseverance will be looking for biomarkers, so different uh, preserved things in the soil uh, that um, were produced by biology. Uh, so something, uh, you know, some sort of a material that was created by life, uh, either as a waste product or something like that. Uh, so that's the most likely way that we'll determine if there's life on Mars. Um, but still fun to imagine uh, if dinosaurs once lived on Mars. Uh, and then uh, what should kids learn to work at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory at NASA or anything space related someday? Uh, and, you know, there are a lot of different ways you can get into the space world. Um, obviously, engineering or any other STEM field would definitely be something as building a robot to go to another planet takes a lot of engineering. But uh, there are a lot of other types of people at NASA and the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Uh, educators who like to present information like this and share science with the world. Uh, there are people who work uh, to uh, share uh, news, uh, you know, working with marketing, things like that. Graphic designers, you got to create a cool logo uh, for Mars missions, obviously. So there are a lot of different ways you can get involved with space, but uh, that's a great question. And STEM fields are definitely a big thing uh, for uh, rockets and space travel. Uh, Rachel says, I'm kind of, glad, kind of glad to watch the curated and abridged version rather than trying to catch it live. I'm a bit spacey. Haha, <laughs> nice one, Rachel. And the chances that I would have gotten distracted and missed are, missed it are pretty high. The commentary is awesome, too. Well, I'm so glad you could join us for this uh, this little teaser. But I would encourage you to check out some of the other coverage online. Uh, NASA will probably put together their own recap, uh, which will uh, do maybe better justice than I can. But, you know, we put our own spin on things. So I appreciate you, Rachel, for tuning in for my uh, summary here. Tara says, when did Perseverance leave Earth? Wondering how long the trips to get to Mars are. That's a great question, Tara. Awesome question. Uh, Perseverance was launched on July 30th of last year. So it's been on its way to Mars uh, for quite a while. Uh, now about six, seven months. And that's the average length that it takes to get to Mars uh, on a best case scenario. Because Mars and Earth are orbiting at different speeds, sometimes Mars is really far away on the other side of the sun as the Earth. And so the window that we call, we call them windows um, for uh, sending something to Mars only happened about once every two years. Uh, and during that window, uh, the ideal length to get to Mars is anywhere from four to eight months, and on average about six months. So it took a while to get there. Uh, Eric says, thanks for doing this, Patrick. Well, thanks for watching, Eric. You're one of our longtime watchers. Appreciate your support. Uh, Kalen says, will Perseverance interact with Curiosity? That's a great question, Kalen. Uh, and the answer is probably no. And you know what? Let's uh, let's load up Space Engine here. Um, ooh, do 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 uh, there, was a, there was an update. Ooh, maybe they updated something about Mars. <laughs> Let's load it up here. Uh, so I'll show you a map of Mars. We can talk about the different landing sites. Um, but uh, to answer your question, Kalen, uh, they will very, uh, it's very unlikely that they'll interact because they are pretty much an opposite size of the planet. Um, and what's more likely is that a future mission will interact uh, with, um, with, uh, do, 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 do. This is not Mars, by the way. This is an exoplanet uh, from our last live stream. Um, let's go back to Mars, flying through space here. Um, what's more likely is that another mission that we'll be sending in the future will uh, interact with the samples left by uh, Perseverance, as that's one of its primary missions. So um, here I'm going to really test my knowledge of um, do, 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 of uh, Mars and try to show you where they landed. Uh, so, okay, I'm going to turn the atmosphere off, turn clouds off. Um, I want to make it brighter as well. 
How do I do that? Stars, clusters, I know you can do that. No, that's Aurora. No, that's the wrong button. <laughs> um, I thought I could turn off the sun or make it extra bright. Well, okay, we'll just uh, brighten it up here or maybe we can control time. Okay, we'll just do that. Um, all right, so uh, Perseverance are, uh, landed in Jezero Crater, uh, which uh, I think Mars is upside down here. So let me flip things around here and attempt to identify the landing spot. And I believe actually that, is there any way that I actually found this that quickly? Um, let's uh, finally confirm. Uh, let's see, Mars. I'm gonna I'm gonna cheat a little bit. Hope y'all don't mind. Um, let's find a map of Mars and all the landing sites. So, um, I might have been wrong on that one, but that's fine. Let me move shadow. Oop, nope. I'm gonna speed up time here. Go. Yeah, okay. Oop, that's a little too fast. <laughs> all right, we're we're doing this live. Okay, so let's uh, rotate around here, and we're going to be coming up on Gale Crater, uh, which, ooh, ah, sorry about that, <laughs> is going to be right around here, um, uh, I believe this is Gale Crater, um, let me... <laughs> Let me look at it from the side. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that right there is Gale Crater. Listen, my Mars geography is not as good as it should be. That is Gale Crater. Ha ha! I'm right. Awesome. Okay, so that's where Curiosity landed. Uh, and then we want to check out um, the Jezero Crater. And that is going to be uh, a little bit further away. Okay, Jezero Crater is right over here. I believe. Yeah, so around this neck of the woods on Mars. Um, yeah, roughly there. <laughs> You'll take my word for it, I'm sure. So anyway. They're, all this to say they're opposite sides of Mars and they will likely not interact with one another. Plus they drive very slowly. So it would take a long time for them to get to each other. But great question, Kaylin. All right, we're going to be wrapping it up here. Uh, but Jennifer says, uh, what will the next planet we explore be? That's a great question, Jennifer. We're, we're going to keep exploring Mars for sure. Uh, but there are actually some missions to explore some moons. For example, there are some prospective missions to go to Europa, one of uh, Jupiter's moon uh, moons in the future. There's also a mission to Titan in the works, which is Saturn's exciting moon. Um, so those are two future spots that we're going to explore, but Mars is high on the list and we'll be going there uh, for sure a lot more. Didi says, what a thrill. Thank you so much, Didi. I'm so glad you're excited about it. Heather says, where does the parachute go? How fast does Perseverance travel on Mars? Uh, and that's a question from Braylon. Thanks so much for asking that, Braylon. Uh, and that's a great question. Where does the parachute go? Uh, and uh, I am not sure, but you know, it goes under the ground for sure. Uh, so I wonder if we've taken a picture of Curiosity's parachute um, from space. The Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter can take close-up pictures um, of the surface of Mars. And you would have thought, ah, there it is. Cool. Uh, well, so first of all, check this out. This is uh, really awesome. Um, the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter actually took a picture of uh, Curiosity as it was uh, landing, which is uh, pretty amazing. Uh, and you all can't see it, so let me pull that up. So this is a picture of Curiosity as it was landing, and I believe we have more pictures of Perseverance as it was landing. Well, one other thing about Perseverance is that it had much better cameras on it, um, and it has a microphone, so we'll actually be able to hear what it's like on the surface of Mars. How crazy is that? So that is the parachute of Curiosity as it's landing. Uh, and then we do actually know, uh, so here is a photograph of, um, or not even a photograph, but, uh, an animation showing us 
uh, the parachute of curiosity. So there you go. So we actually can see uh, the parachute. So that's a really great question. Uh, Brethren, thanks so much for asking it. Uh, but we do, uh, so the, all this stuff will fall back to the ground and it'll crash, uh, but uh, the parachute will just blow around uh, potentially forever. <laughs> um, all right. And then let's see. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. So Rachel says, how would you refer to terrain on Mars and other planets, uh, since it isn't on Terra? That's a good question. Well, we refer to it as the Martian surface, um, but the soil on Mars we refer to as regoliths, same as we refer to the soil on, uh, on the moon, but that's just more of its consistency. It's very fine and powdery. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, uh, scientists, when they talk about Mars, they, uh, they uh, talk about Martian days instead of uh, tomorrow, uh, and yesterday, they'll say uh, Solaro and Yestersol because they measure uh, days on Mars differently. One day on Earth is 24 hours long and one day on Mars is about 24 and a half hours long. And many of the scientists who operate Mars actually are going to be uh, living on a Mars schedule. They'll actually, so they'll actually uh, sleep and, and wake to um, a, a schedule that uh, has a longer day. And so they'll be totally offset. Uh, this is something pretty common for uh, missions to other planets. So great question, Rachel. I want to make sure I didn't miss any others. Uh, so Braylon asked about the parachutes. And one last question from Anne Marsh. Thanks so much for watching. Anne, uh, Mar uh, Anne says, where are the rovers from the UAE and China? Are they looking for the same things as Perseverance? That's a great question. Um, and uh, so uh, it's been a really exciting uh, past few weeks for um, for ex exploration of Mars uh, because there have been a number of probes uh, from other countries. Uh, the United Arab Emirates, for example, sent the Hope probe uh, to Mars and it actually sent us a picture of uh, Mars. But um, this probe, uh, da -da -da -da. Uh, it doesn't have a lander. So this is just a probe to orbit Mars and take pictures of it as far as I can tell. Um, but uh, this is a photograph of Mars uh, taken by the Hope Probe, uh, you can see there from the UAE. So pretty cool, we've got another country exploring Mars there. Uh, and then China is also um, getting into uh, exploring Mars as well. And uh, right now the uh, Tianwen-1 mission um, is uh, it's on its way to Mars. I don't believe it has landed yet. You know, I'll have to apologize that I'm. Uh, yes. Okay. So it, it recently inserted itself into orbit. So uh, the Tianwen One uh, rover is orbiting Mars right now, and then they have a lander that's separate. There's a probe and lander, but the lander is going to be. Uh, landing they're planning in may of this year so that'll be coming soon but uh great question Anne. thanks so much for asking that uh and it's exciting uh for as many countries as possible to get involved with space exploration the great thing about science is that um when it comes to uh international science uh most scientists are really happy to share science with each other regardless of any other political stuff going on so thanks for bringing that up Anne. Uh, and that will wrap us up for this stream today so thank you everyone for tuning into this special edition live stream and thanks for your amazing questions that's so awesome Awesome. And we'll be seeing you next week on our next stream scheduled for next Monday. And we're going to keep with the trend because uh, last or this Monday we covered ancient Western astronomy. And since St. Patty's Day is coming up, I would like to talk about ancient British astronomy. We're going to cover some ancient astronomy from ancient cultures in the British Isles. So Brit uh, Great Britain, Scotland, Ireland, uh, and all those uh, places. We're going to cover some uh, ancient Celtic, Gaelic mythology, all that fun stuff. Uh, and how it relates to the night sky. And that'll be next Monday at 6 p.m. So thank you all so much for tuning in tonight. I, have, once again, have been your planetarium specialist, Patrick Hess. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel where all of our past live streams are visible there. If you're a first-time watcher, uh, thanks so much for tuning in and be sure to check out some of our past streams and be sure to come back here on Monday. And one last thank you to our supporting sponsor, MRI Global, for supporting these live streams continuing forwards. Uh, without you, we couldn't do this. And without the support of all of our viewers, we couldn't as well. Well, so thank you all so much. Have a wonderful week. Uh, enjoy the warmer weather, and we will see you next Monday at 6. Bye, everyone.